um, from Broadview Ranch in Lexington, Virginia. It is a, a family farm, multi-generational. Um, I'm the third generation. We're working on the fifth. <laughs> um, we're located about 10 to 15 minutes from the Virginia Horse Center. Um, we're up against a mountain and that mountain goes and is in the, um, it is public property but we have no access to it because it's so steep. So while we border public land, we can't, there's no advantage to us from that. Uh, I'm just going to let this slideshow run um, and talk about things. And please interrupt me with questions. I usually give farm tours. So this is just a farm tour without the farm. <laughs> I have given farm tours. I have kept track of the farm tours that I've given. And so far, I've given farm tours to people from 39 different countries, some of which I had to look up on the map <laughs> to find out where they were. I mean, I really didn't know where Bhutan was. <laughs> So um, we, we are a multifaceted farm. The horse part is just uh, one facet of the farm. And our horse part consists of our family-owned horses. We do not board horses. The, only, the way we share our farm is we have day, um, day facilities for people to use. Um, so you can come to our farm as a group or as an individual to school or just to ride the trails and our fee is $25 a day per horse to use any of the facilities that you want. We we'll do allow um, primitive camping which means you get to park your trailer in the field um, and there's no charge for that if you wanted to do more than one day. We, have, we hold clinics, um, the Rockbridge hunt, fox hunts on our land. My grandfather started the Rockbridge Hunt. Um, our whole family fox hunts. Um, this is some of the camping. The people come and put up corrals and, and camp. We have two sisters that come on a regular basis. One lives in North Carolina, one lives in Maryland. They meet in the middle and, and camp for a weekend. So um, basically our um, family plan is to share the farm. That's our job as stewards of this farm is to share it with people um, on a, you know, tr in a, a good manner. That, uh, so it's about 2,000 acres, uh, mostly wooded. Only about 600 acres is open. Um, we have, a, like I said, a large extended family. That is not a champion chicken. That was at, <laughs> that was at an actha ride. And Henrietta sat on her lap after she got her rib. <laughs> So we hold, um, I have a list here of different things. We, Pony Club does stuff at our farm. We've done orienteering. That's an act the ride. Um, we do hunter paces. We've done treasure hunt trail rides, sheepdog trials, saddle fitting clinics. We do a lot of Pirelli natural horsemanship clinics and retreats. Like I said, we do schooling days. We have a free jump so that you can school your horse and let them make all their mistakes while you're not on them. We do farm tours. Um, I've given introductions to horses for the uh, Center for Peace and Justice, which was very interesting um, to do because the relationship between the human and the horse is, was very much what they're trying to get with the relationship. We do have a lot of other animals too. <laughs> I'll get to that. <laughs> um, we do. Um, Hunting, which is the regular deer hunting, turkey hunting. We, we also have uh, beagle packs that come and hunt on our farm, and again, the fox hunting. Um, we're very strong proponents of wildlife and do a, uh, have a good wildlife um, management program. We do hunter trials, horse trials, and trail riding. Um, that was the sheepdog trial that we had. Um, we run cattle, we do grass-fed beef, which we sell at our store by the cut. You can buy as little as one pound of hamburger or as much as you want. We do um, home delivery, once a month home delivery to people uh, in the DC area and the Roanoke area and the Rockbridge County area. They sign up 
So we have a customer base, and that is what we have found works best instead of having people come to us. If we go to them, they sign up one time. They don't have to think about it every month, what to order. We put a cooler full of meat on their, on their porch once a month and pick up last month's cooler, empty. Um, we do chickens, but only for eggs. We do pork, and we do grass-fed beef. Uh, we try to do it in a sustainable manner. Um, this is some of our trails and streams. Um, let's see. We, we really work the animals together a lot. You can saw the chickens and the pigs. Um, those were eagles that came and visited this, this fall. They really liked their chickens. <laughs> <laughs> We have hawks too. The hawks are our biggest predator for the chickens. You, and obviously you can't do anything about the hawk. They're a protected species. As my brother-in-law says, you cannot shoot a hawk. There is no law, however, that says you can't shoot at the limb that he's sitting on. <laughs> I don't think he's ever done that. But um, We try to use, uh, we, our grazing method is holistic high density grazing. Uh, where we move the cattle on a very, sometimes daily, depending on the season, um, to fresh grass. Uh, we feed very little hay. Um, questions? How many people uh, work your farm? <laughs> <laughs> we did have two farm managers, <laughs> but I've been doing it for the last six months or so. It's very interesting what the family has done. The next generation, my, my, my children's generation, have um, found a way to be involved in the farm and not have to live there because we've educated them and they're supposed to go out and get good jobs, which they have. And that takes them away from the farm. So um, I am the on-site on manager and I have uh, people that work a couple hours a week for me. Um, running the tractor and, and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm the on-site on manager and um, they do all the financial stuff and a lot of the vision and mission stuff. We use the internet. Everything's on the internet. We have meetings on the internet. Um, we have these Google Doc things that you can get on the phone and everybody's working on the same page. We, um, so they have, we have family members in Switzerland, London, and Roanoke that are just as involved as I am, which is a really neat way to bridge the generations. Um, so, and that was the next generation that figured that out. Because we were not doing this um, direct selling of the meat before. And the, the pork is, a new, uh, is new to us. But basically with our vision and mission is that it, it's there for our family and it's there to, for other people as well to enjoy. Um, but it does have to be sustainable for us to continue to enjoy it and for other people to continue to enjoy it. So that's what we're trying to, to make that switch with a generational change of ownership. And um, it's hard, it's very difficult, but it's doable. It is hard doing new things. Um, and you always have members of the family that, while they are supportive in one way, they're negative in another. We have a saying in our family, negativity is a no-no. <laughs> so uh, basically, if you can't say anything supportive, you know, I mean, be honest, but don't, but don't take away from somebody's what they're trying to do. So it, this farm is owned by Tilson Family Properties, which is the, the people, and then Broadview Farm Incorporated is the meat business. Broadview Ranch Incorporated, or LLC, is the horse business. 
So we're basically we want Tilson Family Properties to be a platform for other people in the family to do what they want. There's many, many things that could be added on um, to this. Um, that's our pig glue. Uh, we have a Koopa Stoga, which is like a hoop house on wheels, like a, that the um, chickens live in, and then we have electric fencing around that um, for the uh, pigs, and then the p pigs help protect the chickens from predators. Uh, I don't know how well that works, but that's my granddaughter. All our stock, we use natural stockmanship as well as natural horsemanship. You can pick up all our chickens. You can pet all our pigs. Um, you know, our cattle, I load and, and do all the cattle um, pretty much by myself. Um, so we do, like I said, a lot of natural horsemanship um, stuff, and so we've just applied the principles that um, in order to, to uh, the, they have a criterion to be able to stay on the farm, and every animal on the farm has a plan. You know, so we don't just collect animals. Everybody has a plan, whatever it is. Um, there is a plan. That's our bull. He's American Red Devon. We did. We actually did grow those pumpkins, and then we uh, we grew them to feed the pigs. So um, that was pretty fun. So, any other questions? No. We've had to reinvent ourselves a little bit. Uh, until we went to the, um, the home delivery method with the meat, it just wasn't quite we were spinning our wheels a little bit, um, financially, financially spinning our wheels. Yeah, you have to make money. Um, but by separating the businesses out into individual businesses, then the meat business runs with these, this group of people, and then the horse business runs with this group of people. And so that, that avoids conflict. And, um, the other thing that we have done is, in my generation, is basically raised our families on this farm, either coming to it for the summer vacations or, or living there full time. So they're all on the same page, um, basically. No, we basically we'd been giving it away for years, um, and so uh, we just decided that it's we would actually run, you know put in the cross country course. We have a cross country course. Um, we have miles and miles and miles of trails. Um, we have a free jump, a dressage ring. We do not have a riding a ring. We, do, we don't have that. It's, it's mainly trails that we have. Uh, well, you'll be around for a bit if there are yeah. questions. Yeah, I got two more things okay. to say on the management part. Um, really, what we have found with the management is the management needs to be concerned more with the innovation and the vision and the mission rather than solving the day-to-day -day problems. You can get so caught up in mucking the stalls or whatever it is you're doing that you forget to look at where you're going to go. And um, so you need to be really careful that you're successful in the things that matter and not successful in something that doesn't count. I think that was part of what we were doing a little bit before. And then the other thing is you really need to respond to the current economic situation you cannot just run it like your fathers or your grandfathers did and try to do it better. You've really got, it's different. Everything's different and it's gonna to need to be reinvented over and over again, not just keeping it running. 